Welcome everyone, Edward Hertzman, founder and CEO of Athletech News. Andrew, super excited to have you here today. You and the center team making a lot of headlines for all the right reasons the past few months. So excited to uh, to learn more. Um, let's kick it. Let's kick it right off. So love to know your vision for Center as a brand, and how have you been bringing that vision to life since you've taken over as CEO in September of twenty two. Yeah, so I joined, as you could tell, just about a year ago. Uh, I think my one-year anniversary was just uh, just this past week. And uh, really, the vision was to establish Center as a highly trusted uh, lifestyle brand in the wellness category, where we bring together the latest research, content, digital tools, physical products, all to help users and audience and consumers on their wellness journey. And so far, it's been going really well. Like We've... We've been working just around the clock to bring together Inspire Fitness, which was acquired back in 2022, and Center, which was acquired at the same time, and bringing the strengths of both companies together to bridge that gap between physical and digital, um, but in unique ways. Uh, so we, we, we just launched a number of things in the past couple of weeks. Uh, super excited for getting all of those into the marketplace. And then we've got a lot of new things We'll be announcing over the coming probably three to six months so it's just the start very cool so on the topic of acquisition you know center was acquired by high post capital back in march of 22 uh before you got to the company um how has that acquisition influenced center strategy moving forward yeah so we believe in building um a broad platform or ecosystem that connects the world of physical and digital so that it doesn't really matter what tool or what, uh, what um, uh, element you're looking for at any given point on your wellness journey. We really wanted to bridge the two together. And with Inspire, we got 20 years of quality craftsmanship, um, especially in the strength training area, which, as we all know, is, is, a, hot, is a hot area uh, in the world of fitness these days. And I think that's only going to grow in, in, the, in the coming years with the research about, you know, the importance of strength training in, in any fitness regimen. And then on the center side, uh, really bringing together meals, mind and movement all into one package where it's not just about fitness. It's really the holistic element of how these three pieces work together. And then we're wrapping that with an element of motivation. What, what is it that actually drives you every day when you wake up? to want to care about meals, movement, and, um, and uh, mind. So we're, we're really looking at it through that lens of, of how to inspire people to be happy and healthy, not just saying, you know, here's a workout or here's, here's a program. It's, 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 it's much deeper than that. So I'm looking at the, the piece of equipment behind you. Um, you know, it's interesting. You, you see a lot of companies looking to get out of the hardware business. Um, why is Center so keen to enter the fitness equipment world? And how do you balance selling equipment with creating digital fitness and wellness content? So for, for us, it's, it's, it's really both. So we believe that content's important. Digital, digital content's important. Digital tools are important. Um, uh, creating the opportunity for people to have routine and have the, the, the inspiration of different uh, trainers and, and people like Chris at the same time, as we know, coming out of the pandemic, people work out at home, people work out in the gym, um, people sort of work out on the go. And we want to make sure we provide the tools that enable people to do that. And we believe by combining our tools with our content, we can offer better programming and more impactful programming than, than others. Uh, and then also in the strength training side with, with Inspire Fitness, They've really established themselves as a leading player and a trusted brand, especially in the fitness enthusiast side of specialty retail. And so we're going to lean into that and bring that to a much, much larger audience through the center brand. Uh, so I, I, I'd say it's a combination of all those all those factors. Uh, but we don't, you know, and it leads probably to a different question, but we don't really view us as a connected fitness company. Um, and I know I mentioned this in an in a interview with, with yeah, Ashley. Right. You, you beat me to the question because yeah, I, I was going to ask that because I know when we've talked offline, yeah. you yeah. don't like to reference your, refer to yourself as a connected fitness company. Well, why is that? Yeah. 
Well, I view that, you know, the way I uh, would define connected fitness, at least in, in the market today, is it's really a closed loop um, experience where you sell an expensive piece of hardware and to actually use that expensive piece of hardware, you now have to spend 40 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month. And so for the consumer, it racks up really quick. And if you don't pay, you kind of have a big paperweight in your, in your house. And for us, we really want to create a more connected ecosystem where we don't require one thing to drive the other. That if you want to buy some of our products and not tap into the digital side of our offering, that's your choice. Like that's, we want to enable, enable options and accessibility. Uh, and so we're going to have much more of an open platform ecosystem where physical and digital live together. One plus one will equal three. But if you don't want to have them together, you can have them separately. I was, I was going to ask, do you see those that have the equipment tend to have better engagement? They use the digital content more often. Is it, well, one plus one equals three type of equation? Yeah, I mean, we've seen we've seen deep engagement with, we have sort of a non-equipment side of our content. We have an equipment side of our content. And on the equipment side, we definitely see deep engagement with people that are unlocking that content. So for example, we launched this entire new line of, of home products um, with, with Walmart last week. And with that, we also launched an entirely new training program that showed how you can use all these products, whether there are products or if you already have some at home, how to use these products to unlock the next level of, of a fitness program. And we've seen, you know, fantastic engagement on that um, throughout uh, throughout the last several weeks. And we've got more content that we just launched this week, which I can I can talk mm -hmm. about also that will give people even more opportunities. So you mentioned Chris a few minutes ago. For those that don't know, Chris Hemsworth is is the face of the of the center brand. How how helpful is it to have someone like Chris? associated with the brand and, and how involved is Chris in the day to day? Yeah. So having somebody like Chris is, uh, is, is amazing. Uh, I'd say that in terms of, uh, human beings on this planet, at least, uh, there's, there's, he's probably like one of five that would be the perfect person to have associated with a company like ours. And unlike a lot of celebrity driven businesses where, you know, a celebrity is attached, Chris is not an endorser uh, of the brand. He he is the brand. He he really lives uh, our mission. He throws himself into the latest research and insights, uh, whether it's at a personal level or you know for filming things like Limitless, which which aired last year. Yeah, he's constantly looking at how to be in the on the front edge of of longevity, the front edge of trends in the world of fitness, nutrition, and what he realized was, wow, I'm seeing all this amazing stuff and talking to these amazing people that have such, such impact on me and my career as he sort of prepared for different roles, Thor in included. And, um, and he was like, why can't I bring this to everyone? Like, why, why can't everyone have access to these insights that I've got the privilege of being exposed to? And that's really what led to the launch of, of Center. And for me personally, having seen Center, um, and these pillars, it really set the foundation for everything we were going to build from there, there on, right? It wasn't just going to be a fitness app or it wasn't just going to be a program here or there. It was really how do we help people think about their, their entire day um, from a wellness lens, right? When they get up in the morning and they make breakfast to, you know, what's a positive affirmation or way to start the day to workouts, to uh, meditations to sleep visualizations to all these things like if you if you map out a day a journey we want to be able to take people through that start to finish and make sure we're giving them the curated content and tools to be successful you know talking about the the, the content library where do you kind of see i don't know how to say it, the biggest opportunity or, or where where are you seeing people creating more content where do you see centered like if you had to double down on a certain vertical where would that be right now yeah, so I would say um, we're seeing from from the different content we've launched, we've seen a growing interest in more snack size pieces of content to work out to. So we've gone from longer uh, 30 minute type sessions to breaking it into smaller 
four to six minute pieces. And people have really gravitated to that aspect of like um, burst types of activity. And then we've, we've been increasingly rolling those out in more functional fitness training programs that really provide a broader set of individual um, activities that hit a broader range of, of, of areas of the body and overall fitness. And so that, that's where we're gonna lean in even further. We've got um, a, a functional fitness challenge we just launched this week. Uh, and we're gonna have even more content coming out against that over the next four months. Um, and then we've got a number of, of, of things in the, in the future that I can't talk about yet, but I'm sure we'll be talking about them in, uh, in another, uh, another episode, uh, that will be, as long even- as we get the exclusive or get an embargo that, the, you know, <laughs> now, you know, you mentioned strength training. We've been hearing this on several, several of our episodes, you know, obviously it's, 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 it's that news strength training is obviously trending, um, recovery. And I, I even say, why are we calling it recovery? It should always be like prevention and recovery. Right. Um, but you made a good point. You know, Chris has access to a whole different world of trainers and nutritionists. And, and I think that the general public today is very interested. What are the athletes doing? Okay. Recovery has been something that they've been doing in the locker room for a long time. It's the hyperisis, the theragots that are now bringing that to the masses. We all want, would love to look like Chris in Thorne, but you know, he knows things that we don't know. If you think about what wellness trends, what fitness trends are going on, that what do you think? What is that content going to look like in the next year or two years? What 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 is what's the next trend that we should be we should be thinking about? Sure. Um, well, I'll give you my view. I, I can't speak for everyone else's, but I would say there's a few things. One, um, going to the Chris side of things. I mean, really, Chris, to prepare for his roles, has what we would consider a nutritionist, a personal trainer, a, um, you know, a person to help with mental fitness. And all of those pieces come together and it's, it's really coaching, right? You've got, you know, you've got a food coach, you've got a, a mind coach, you've got a, 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 you know, fitness coach. And that element is one thing we are going to definitively lean much more aggressively into where center becomes your interactive coach, your, your connected coach to help you with, by curating what you need at the right time. Right. And that leans directly into personalization that how do I know who you are, what your goals are, what your motivations are, and how can I make sure I'm giving you what you want, what you need at the right moment. Um, and I think that element of personalization has evolved quite a bit over the last two or three years. I think that's going to continue to evolve quickly over the next two years. Um, and it's going to be an area where we're focusing a lot of our, our energy. Um, but it's really back to that notion of how do we bring the expert perspectives that Chris experiences and bring that to bear for consumers, regardless of their socioeconomic um, you know, uh, position. And I think that the second one, I'm sure you've heard in, in different uh, conversations that you've had recently, is on the uh, AI front. And you know, I think for, from an AI perspective, um, there's a lot of merit in AI, for sure. And, um, and we are gonna definitely be leaning into it um, in, in a number of cases. I also think there is a lot of smoke and mirrors with AI um, that uh, is gonna get overhyped and it's gonna be really finding where one stops and the other starts. Uh, you know, I, 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 at Brand Week, they, they had a whole session on, you know, is AI going to kill creativity? Like, is AI going to take over for creativity? And the, 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 uh, the, the view was it's not. Like, that, that, that data can get you so far, but human creativity, not based on, on a machine, is what takes you the rest of the way. I view that, that w working out and having the, the, the compassion, the empathy, the understanding of what people are trying to do and the motivations, all that needs to be baked into what we're creating. One element AI, one element human. So that's, that's all my the technology point. in the world. No one's doing the push up for you at the end of the day. You know? <laughs> no, that would be great. But yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> well, we could have a whole conversation on EMS, you know, that's, that's, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. we're getting there, but yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. And, um, I think we're going to hear a lot more about how AI is in is, the intersection of that in the fitness wellness world. Like, I won't push you because I know you said you got some exciting announcements coming out, but I hope that you will come back and share those with us. 
look, I love, I love hearing what you guys are doing. As someone in New York that doesn't have a ton of space, you know, I can't put plunges and big rowers and everything in my, in, in my home, but, but I can certainly use your products and, and, and really um, appreciate the time, Andrew, and uh, yep, appreciate uh, the support of uh, Athletech. Thank you. Thank you.